I was researching for the Hunter episode today, and I came to this library. Um, but the problem is there's a lot of people around here, so we have to be very quiet. So, oh, oh that's my sorry. 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 Oh, I'm so sorry. <sighs> sorry. I can't. It won't turn off. Hold on. It won't turn off. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Really sorry about this. It won't turn off. Uh, oh, uh, hold on. Maybe I can. Oh, there we go. Sorry, guys. Um, okay, everyone just left. So, uh, I guess we don't have to be quiet here. Uh, I feel really bad though. I wasn't trying to, wasn't trying to make everyone leave. But, um, yeah. So, I was doing some, uh, some research for today's video because today is a very big topic. And I came to the library to do some research for that. Uh, welcome everyone to the stream. We'll get started really quickly. We've got a very, 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 very large topic. This is probably the largest topic I've ever tried to get into. And uh, there's a reason why we never did this live stream until now. Because this is an introduction to Hanta and my introduction, like basic, basic introduction is already three pages long for the outline. So um, I hope we can finish everything today. But I'll try to. So before we get started, though, I, I do want to make it clear that Hansa is not only for advanced learners. So if you're a beginner, you can still benefit somewhat from knowing Hansa. Now, there's exceptions for that. Uh, first, though, I want to say I've already made a video about Hansa, but it was really, really basic. It only talked about if Hansa is still useful and it gave a, it gave a quick, a few quick examples of how to use it. But today's video is going to be more of an in-depth introduction to Hunta video. So I've never actually taught a full introduction to Hunta before. So this is my first time. Um, prerequisites for today. Are as follows. Um, at least a high beginner. In order to get something out of Hunta. To be honest. If you're not at least able to make sentences in Korean, so like high beginner, at least you can make full sentences. You can use a lot of basic grammar. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you can use it. If you're at least at this level, you can start to really benefit from knowing Hanta. If you're still learning the alphabet or you're just barely learning some basic grammar, like you don't know how to say something like, I want to go to school, you know, some really basic stuff, then this, and then Hanta cannot be beneficial to you yet at all. So that's what I want to make clear. You can still watch today's lesson and still kind of follow along. It's not going to be advanced territory, but you won't get that much out of it unless you're at least a high beginner. And if you're an advanced learner, so if you're an advanced, uh, you'll get a lot more out of today's lesson. So if you're advanced or you know high intermediate and you have not yet learned any Hanta, you will get the most out of today's lesson. Um, I think though, I should start today's lesson by getting a new pen. So hold on, let me throw this away. Fortunately, this library just has boxes of pens lying around. So that's good. And I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting for my sponsorship from Expo to come help me out with this. Grandpa Mikey. Oh, Grandpa Mikey. Wow, dropping it, dropping the uh, first donation before I even start teaching. Awesome. Grandpa Mikey. Five dollars, thank you. Uh, let me do a dab. Uh, I'm in the library, so I'll do a silent dab. Shh. Thanks, Grandpa Mikey. Let's see who else is here. Let's make, every, make sure everyone's here. Some kind of uniform. You know, you know what I mean. Hey, Himang. Uh, welcome, as well as my other, uh, oh yeah, Lynn Barch, that's right, Ibrahim, welcome. Um, I saw the other, oh yeah, Zilly, and I saw the other, oh yeah, Secretive, hello as well. That's right, I'll make sure I say hi to all you guys. Thanks for being here. Um, okay, so let's get started then with the lesson, just a couple minutes early. Okay, so basically, first of all, what is Hanja? Well, Hanja is when, when people think of Hansa, they'll just think of, uh, sorry, they'll just think of, you know, da, 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 sorry, I actually don't even know the, uh, 
I don't have this memorized. I had to look at it. But um, yeah, so Hanta is actually, of course, from Chinese. Now, this Han, this character says Han in Korean, if you read it in Korean. And this character says Ja. The pronunciation, this is Han Ja when read. Um, this comes from Han, as in the Han Dynasty of China, and Ta, which means character. Oh, I got another donation. Awesome. <laughs> Who's that? CM Lay CM. How do I say your name? CM Lady or CM Lee Lee Lady? CM Lady or CM Lady? CM Lady. I'm just gonna say CM Lady because it sounds funnier. Awesome. Thank you. A very specific number. I'm. Sh it's maybe it was converted from something. Eight twelve. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for the donation. I'll get to do a dab for you as well. To CM Lady. <laughs> thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so it's it's actually from the Han Dynasty in China, which isn't really important to know, just if you're curious what Han Cha actually means. And Cha is a Chinese character that means character. So that is the character for the word character. Now in Korean, a lot of people know this already, but I'm just saying it anyway. Over 60% of the Korean language today, so that's t modern Korean, is actually Chinese. Now, this is debatable the exact percentage, whether they in include like percentage of what's actually used commonly or what's available to use in the dictionary or every single word in Korean. Depending on how you're looking at it, this percentage will change, but I think it's pretty accurate. 50 to 70% of Korean is straight borrowed from the Chinese language. I don't just mean Chinese influence, but actually just Chinese words that were stuck into Korean. Um, and so, so that's something to just to kind of think about for a bit. So that Korean today you're using actually, 60% of what you're saying is actually from the Chinese language. Although you're not speaking Chinese, you're speaking Korean. It's not, no one Chinese would understand what you're saying originally. Kind of like saying that English is has lots of Latin words in it, even though if you were to speak English to someone who spoke ancient Latin, they wouldn't have a clue what you're saying and vice versa. It's like that. 60% of the vocabulary, not the language itself, but the vocabulary, the words are from Chinese. And in the past, uh, so Hangul, the alphabet we use today, has only been around since, uh, well, it was made in the 1400s, but people didn't actually even use it much in the 1400s. They didn't use it a lot until, like the 1700s, 1800s. It's only been really commonly used for a few hundred years. So before Hangul was invented and even before it was popular, people didn't have a way of writing the Korean language for regular people. So there were some systems of writing Korean before Hangul existed, but they were basically romanization, like a romanization of the Korean language that used Chinese characters. And we're not going to be talking about that that was actually what I did my thesis report on in college uh, when I graduated was re alternate writing systems of the Korean language and stuff like that. But no, the Korean language could not be written prior to Hangul being created without using romanization of another language. Like it sounds like this. No, before that, Korean simply did not write Korean. If you wanted to write and if you were a Korean and if you could write, if you were one of the very, uh, very few educated and wealthy people in Korea, then you would simply write using Chinese. So in Korea, a long time ago, people simply didn't write in Korean. They wrote in the Chinese language, as in they just simply wrote the Chinese language, not the Korean language. They just communicated in Chinese if they needed to write down things. Um, and only people who were very wealthy and very educated could do this. So a regular person, was just poor, uneducated, and possibly even a slave to someone else, they had no way of writing anything. So unless they spoke Chinese or knew some Chinese, tough luck, you know, you're not educated, you can't write. And everyone who did get educated just learned the Chinese language because Korea did a lot of dealings with China. Um, up until even recently, uh, Korea used to be a, what do you call it, a vassal state to China, kind of like paying tribute all the time. And before that, Korea's just had a long history together with China. So anytime they needed to do any official government business, 100% Chinese. So if you were to go and look at old Korean documents, 
of people's names or government documents, you know, fl uh, blueprint, blue, blue, blueprints for building stuff. Like uh, when they built Suwon Castle, you can see the original blueprints. They still have copies of the original blueprints and they're all just written in Chinese because that's the language that they wrote for of doing official documents. So if you look at old Korean stuff, you'll think, oh, I can probably read this. And you know, you probably can't if it was anything that was for official business. Um, the oldest thing in Korean that you can read is the, a document called Hunin Jongeum. And you can search it. It's the really famous picture of Hangul that everyone knows. And this was from the 1400s, 1446, I want to say. And uh, this is the oldest thing in Hangul you can read. And anything prior to that was written just with Chinese. And even during this time, even when Hangul came around, people still weren't really using it that much. Um, okay, so let's just see how we're doing on time. I'm really mostly just concerned about time today. All right, so there, there we go. So Koreans today, though, still learn Hanja. So it's not like a dead writing system. It's actually still used today. Koreans still learn about 1,800 Chinese characters, how to write them, how to read them, and what they mean. Now, that doesn't mean that a Korean you meet will know 100,800 characters. It means they have learned those technically, kind of like, you know, in high school, we learn about the, um, you know, all the politics in the United States around the, uh, the whatever, the Civil War and all these different things. And we don't remember a single bit of it after we get to college. And then when you go to college, you study biology and chemistry, and then you don't remember anything. It's kind of like that. So Koreans learn about 1,800 characters, but the amount that they'll remember after that will depend on how much they're interested in it, whether they want to study it further or, you know, how much they paid attention in class. So typically though, Koreans, I'd say the average Korean will at least know a few hundred, even though they won't know all of these for the most part, they'll at least still know a few hundred, which is still a surprisingly large amount. And only a few hundred is still very useful in Korea because despite what people might tell you about Hanja these days, um, they might say it's not used at all. It actually still is used in modern Korean in writing as well as reading and in the language. So it's still useful, but it's not useful for beginners and beginners won't be able to get anything out of this. So yes, Koreans today still new, still do hanja. Um, so I'm just trying to give you a full introduction to hanja before I teach you some of the characters. Oh, I got another donation. A Himang. Oh, A Himang. Of course, of course, A Himang gives a donation for a happy birthday. Is Min Yoongi one of the BTS members? Is that one of the BTS members? A Himang, three. Oh, that's why it's three oh nine because it's a uh, March 9th. Okay. Min Yoongi, that's your name, right? Yeah. Okay. Min Yoongi, wherever you are, I wish you a happy birthday. Senior Chukai. Okay, there we go. BTS. Yes. Okay. Figured. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's one way to get my attention when I get really deep into this. Okay, hancha though. So, so hancha, when, when you're talking about hancha, you're actually just pretty much, for the most part, you're just talking about characters taken straight from Chinese. Now, there are some hancha that were created in Korea, but none of them are used today. They're like, they're kind of like history things you could learn about if you're interested in. Um, hancha started in China and it's very, very old. It's older than you might think. It's at least before 1200 BC is when China started, well, has, when we have records of China using Chinese characters to write stuff down. And at this time, it's, it's different than what modern hancha looks like today. For example, this character in hancha means mountain and Koreans today read it as san. So you know the Korean word san, which means mountain, actually just comes from a Chinese character that looks like this. Well, in 1200 BC, they weren't typing on computers and doing fonts, of course. And they simply, these characters are representative of some sort of concept. So in Korean, you can read this and you can say, oh, this means sun, this means mountain. Well, at the time in ancient Chinese, this would have been written a few different ways. Maybe something like this, mountain. Over time, 
of people writing these characters. Maybe they said, oh, you know, I can just write it like, like this. It's the same thing, right? Oh, I can just write it like this. And that's how these characters kind of evolve. And sometimes they changed a lot more dramatically. Like you'll get something like uh, one finger becomes the character one. You get two fingers becomes the character two. And then you get something that looks nothing like it today. You get a, a hand with five fingers becomes, sorry, actually I wrote this wrong, becomes this. When originally it would have been something like this. Well, something like that. Um, and I actually don't remember the original form of this one. So Chinese characters are very old and they've changed over time. So if you were to look at an old Chinese document, even if you know Chinese today, you would have no clue what it's saying. You would, all, you would have to, one, you'd have to know their language. They're not just going to be speaking modern Chinese. And then two, you would also have to know what those symbols represented at the time. Whereas at the time, this is a very simple character, mountain, which meant mountain since it was first created. But there are many other characters which have changed their meaning completely over time and no longer mean anything that they do today. Uh, I'll be giving you some examples of those a little bit later. Um, so Chinese characters originally represented concepts is, the conce is what I want to convey to you. Uh, though they don't always only represent concepts. Now, that's what they originally were for. So kind of like pictographs, whereas the Korean alphabet is just an alphabet. It represents letters. And then Japanese, you know, Japanese represents syllables. So Japanese alphabet completely represents syllables. The Korean alphabet is letters like A, B, C. And then the Chinese alphabet, whatever, you know, represents some sort of concept. And the problem with that is uh, Japanese and Korean, you can just read it as is. Han, ke. Chinese, however, you have to read it by knowing what the context of, its be, of it is being used in. So maybe in, in certain context, um, you'll read a certain character a certain way, and in a different context, you'll have to pronounce it a different way because it doesn't represent a sound, it just represents the meaning of something. Um, let's see. Okay, I think I'm doing okay on time, which is good. I was just mostly worried about time. In Korean, the other thing I wanted to say is that in Korean, this is the character that means sun, okay? So this is the Chinese character that means sun. Well, in Korean, it's simply read as il, il, the same word as one, il. But anyway, this is the character il. That's it. If you were to learn that the character, you don't have to learn how to write this. If you learn that the character for sun is just read as il, that's all you have to do and you're done. Be very grateful for this. Because in Japanese, and I believe Chinese has some, somewhat of a thing as well, but at least in Japanese, depending on how a character is combined with another character, this sound could be he, p, b, ni, and several others. I think there's like 11 sounds that this can have in Japanese. Japanese typically will, will change the sound based on the character and what it's used with. Because Japanese, when they use Chinese characters, they still use them based on the concept the meaning of the concept and not the sound. In Korean, however, I can take this character and combine it with anything else in any situation and it's only il. That's it. So if you learn a character in, Ch in Korean, you only have to learn it once. You only have to learn one or sometimes, sometimes two sounds. For example, this is the Chinese character that means not as an anida, you know, to not be. And this is pronounced as bu. Or sometimes, as in like, for example, the word pujong hada would be like illegal. Uh, but it's also pur, as in purpop, another word for illegal. So pu or pur. But you don't have to memorize like a ton of different random readings to read it. It's going to only have one or sometimes two readings to it. So most of the time, just one. So if you learn a character, you can just learn the character, kind of what it means. And then the way to write, the way to read it, and that's it. You don't have to memorize. Well, it's this sound in this word, or this sound in this word. So if you're familiar with Japanese, and I know a lot of people are kind of familiar with this concept, then this is what I wanted to make sure that's clear: that you don't have to memorize a bunch of different combinations in order to immediately use these characters. Which is why I think hanga, sorry, which is why I think hanja is so useful in Korean, even more useful right away than it is in Japanese or Chinese, just because you only need to learn one sound or two sounds for each character. Uh, let's see. So the other thing I want to talk about is how did Chinese get into Korea? Does anyone know? 
I, I don't know. I don't want to be going too fast for you guys. Did I write the wrong character? Which one? Which one? I thought that's what I wrote, right? Didn't, isn't this what I wrote? Isn't that what I wrote? Did someone say something else? Uh, it should be. I'm not sure what he's talking about. Oh, I, well, oh yeah, yeah, my stroke order? No, I meant to write, I meant to write it as you guys are writing. I just wrote it really quickly. Yeah, there's another character that's this. That's not what I wrote. I was trying to write it as, write it as this, I think. But I apologize. No, 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 these are actually different. No, I, I apologize. If I write something really quickly, I'm not teaching you guys how to write all the characters today because there's over 1,800 that Korean uses. There's tens of thousands in the actual Chinese language that could be used. Um, and a lot of them can look the same and a lot of them are difficult to write. So we're not going to be covering how to write everyone in the stroke order. I'll talk about a little bit the stroke order later, but no, we're going to be talking more about the general and introduction to Hunta. But yeah, if I write a character the wrong way or it looks like I write it the wrong way, I apologize. Uh, this one I just wrote, that one I just wrote very fast. So it looked like I wrote it. I wrote a completely different character actually, which is not the same thing. Okay, so how did Hanja even get in Korea, right? So you know that of course, China's right next to Korea. So obviously Korea has it, Japan has it, other countries use it as well. Um, but the main thing that brought Hanja and Chinese into Korean wasn't just them being located together because them being located together, sure, that, that means that they'll get some of the Chinese characters in the language. But what it was, was Buddhism actually, uh, specifically during the three kingdoms period in Korea, when there was uh, Goguryeo, Baekje, and Silla. Korea was divided into three major kingdoms, as well as a couple other small ones. Um, and during that time, Buddhism was very popular and Buddhism was brought over originally from India, then through China, and then China brought it over into Korea. And then Korea actually brought it over into Japan. So that's why Japan has Buddhism today as well as from through Korea. And that was around the 500s, you know, give or take a few hundred years. It got really popular around that time. And Buddhism was using Chinese characters through how popular it was in China as well. And that brought over Buddhist text. Uh, a lot of people who are believing in Buddhism that were learning Chinese for Buddhism. So you get this big explosion of everyone now in Korea more than before using Hanja for regular things. People who are educated, however, keep that in mind. Um, and then the other thing is, <clears throat> I wanted to show you how common <clears throat> Hanja is in, so this is, all, this is all just part of the introduction. I'm just doing the introduction to the lesson today. We haven't even started. Um, I wanted to give you guys a, uh, kind of show you guys how prevalent Korean is in, sorry, how prevalent Hanja is in Korean. So first of all, it's in Korean grammar. A lot of Korean grammar actually uses Chinese. For example, the forms 전에 and 후에. <clears throat> um, 전, I know I'm not really trying to teach you guys uh, uh, Hanta for this for today's lesson because it's not really important that you know how to write it at all these days and you can always learn it later if you want and I had learned this a long time ago when I was learning Japanese <clears throat> I learned how to write a bunch of the characters but that was like 13 year 14 15 years ago and it's been a while so I'm kind of rusty on it I was never very good at it anyway though so Tane means before and it actually comes from a Chinese character read in Korean as Chun which means before so if you see a word that has the sound ton in it, it might be because it's from the character that means before. There are other characters that also sound like chun that have different meanings, but if you see a word that has chun in it, it might be before. So think about that when you're hearing a word. You, for example, if you hear the word jik chun, jik chun. So if you say something happens, jik chun, something else, which is the same exact grammar as chun for saying before, it means right before. Jik is actually like right directly. So directly and then before. So if you knew the word chun, if you knew the hanta, chun means before, and you see chun used somewhere else, you might be able to guess it means before. Now, if I give you a new word, so here's the word yoja chingu with chun attached. What do you guys think 전 여자친구 means? 
Oh, I just got a new member. I didn't get a notification though yet. Must be coming soon. New member Chris, oh. I didn't, oh, there we go. I knew it would come a little bit later. <laughs> Chris, oh, thank you. Welcome to the, welcome to the family. Chris, oh, let me give a dab. Yeah, I see you guys have got it. Ex-girlfriend, that's right. Well, let, me, let me give a dab to uh, Chris O, the newest member. <sighs> Thank you, Chris. So yes, um, if you see Chan Yoja Chingu, well, if you didn't know the word Chan Yoja Chingu, you can know that the word Chan comes from Chinese and means before. So you might be able to guess, oh, before girlfriend, or even Chan Namja Chingu, before boyfriend, which means yes, ex boyfriend. They use the word Chan to mean ex, no longer, as in before. So this is also Chinese as well. Um, it's in a lot of grammar though, not just chun and hu, which means before and after, <clears throat> but also in, let's see, the other grammar form, you know, wihe, like hagi wihe, in order to do something, hagi wihe, or hagi wihe so, like for someone, wihan, so, for someone, like a present for someone, charsuder wihan sonmur, a present that's for charsu. Well, this we also, I'm not very good at drawing this one though, so apologies. Oh, actually, I totally butchered this already. Only has two. And then, um, let's see, one, two, yeah, that's right. And then, no, I think I messed that. It's supposed to be that first. And then, okay. Anyway, I'm not, I, I'm not teaching you guys how to write and read them today <laughs> because we don't have enough time for that. Uh, this is a character that's read as we. So if you see we something, you might be able to guess that it means for. And actually this we is actually from a verb called we hada which means to be for, the purpose of. So this is used for the purpose of. So this we heso, this we in the we, we heso form is actually also hancha. So it's not written in hancha, it's written in just regular hangul, but these Chinese characters are hiding in plain sight in the Korean language. There, it's actually a lot of grammar forms. You might be really surprised how much Chinese, even in, um, even in verbs, that are actually otherwise pure Korean, there are hanja pieces hidden inside of them. For example, I bet you didn't know the word horangi for tiger is actually Chinese. Not quite though, but this horang is actually a Chinese word that Koreans stick e onto the end of, which they, they commonly do. Many words end with e, especially animal titles in Korean. This horang actually is a Chinese word. I'm not gonna write the, write the word up here, but it originally comes from a character, hu and lang, and hu means a feline, like a cat, and lang means a wolf. So a cat wolf, hu lang yi. So this regular word, if you were to look it up in a dictionary, it's just, it just says tiger next to it. You don't need to learn Chinese characters, but this is also a Chinese word, horangi. And if you look up, actually most of the animal names are actually from Chinese. Even things like tueji, pig, uh, comes from character to, meaning pig. Mal, horse, well that, that's possible, it could, could, could be from a different language. But anyway, yeah, so there's Chinese hidden all over Korean. Another example is uh, verbs. Anytime you have a verb, that has a noun followed by hada, and it's an action verb. So any action verb with hada, and that can be separated. So that would be like the object marker e or le here, right? You know, kongbu hada, kongbu hada, undong hada, yori hada. All of those, all of them. Um, that are, there's so many of these that are from, these are just straight Chinese words. Kongbu, undong, exercise, yori, cooking. These are two characters, kong and bu, un and dong, yo and li, put together from Chinese language. So anytime you're making a hada action verb with, that can be separated like this, um, there, there are a few exceptions, but anyway, they're all from Chinese. So you can learn that these are actually, you're actually using Chinese words whenever you're using these as well. Okay, so that's the basic introduction to hanta. Hopefully that didn't take away too much of our class. Uh, 222, okay. 
So where where is hancha used then? When do you even need to use hancha? Well, it's official documents. You'll still see it used today. So if you go to the government office in Korea and you need to write down your age, it's going to have your age written with, it'll have, um, I can't remember the character for that. Anyway, it'll have characters written for your birthday. It'll have characters written for your gender and it won't write them in, in Korean. It'll just write the characters in Chinese because it's smaller and you're supposed to just know that. So if you're filling out any sort of official document in Korea and it's not in English, it's going to use hanja in it. Um, any books or text before 1900s, especially, but even the early 1900s too, but especially before 1900s, will use a lot of hanja in them. So it might be mixed hanja together with hangul, or it might just be straight up uh, Chinese pretty much written with this. It's usually kind of a mixture though. Um, and then also if you're going to be studying Korean history, so anything that's older than this, especially, uh, like I said, ledgers, um, government books or logs of things, all of those, any sort of historical documents will also be written with lots of Chinese characters in them just because it's a thing in Korean. So if you need, if the, if the question is, do you need to know han, hanja? to speak Korean. Well, if you want to speak Korean fluently, like a Korean person, if you want to have that level of knowledge, yes, you need to know a lot of hanta. And um, the other question would be, when else would you need to know hanta? So let's say you're just someone who wants to learn to speak Korean. You're not interested in reading old books. You're not interested in studying Korean history or anything like that. Okay. So you're just a regular person today. You just want to talk with your friends. Um, do you need hanta to speak Korean? No, you don't. There you go. Um, to read and write Korean, however, depends on what level you want to get to. If you're happy at a basic conversational level, no, you don't need, you don't need to learn hancha to get to a basic conversational level in Korean. You don't even need hancha to get to a higher conversational level in Korean. You do, however, need hancha if you're going to expect to read and write Korean, especially reading it because it does appear a lot in modern Korean today. Still in regular, normal, everyday things, you'll still see hanja use. Um, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Also, if you want to get advanced vocabulary, you need hanja. If you want to learn advanced vocabulary and you don't know hanja, you're really just wasting your time. You're spending a lot more time than you need to. You could learn hanja and accelerate this a lot faster. Um, Another thing is if you already speak Chinese or you're familiar with Chinese and Japanese, then if you learn hanja, like I said, like I said before, where I showed you can just read one sound or two sounds, you can easily transfer a lot of complicated vocabulary like science vocabulary or economics vocabulary or anything directly into Korean just by reading the exact same word, but with the sounds in Korean. So you don't have to relearn all these different words. For example, if you know the, the word for decision uh, and you know the two characters for the word decision, but you can't think of them in Korean. I mean, you can't think of the, the word in Korean, but you know those characters, how they're read in Korean. A lot of the times you can just do that. You can just change those characters to sound how they would in Korean. There you go. Now you have the Korean word. And there's a lot of situations where you can change it. Um, a popular one people use is the Chinese word and the Japanese word sound similar. Well, it's because they're all the same Chinese word. And if you just read it with the Chin with the Korean sound, you get the exact same meaning, but you didn't have to memorize the words separately. Another one would be like, um, let's see if you knew the word for a uh, love triangle, right? Which is complicated vocabulary in Chinese or Japanese. But if you knew that in Chinese, you can read it in Korean. You just switch the letters into Korean and you can read it as samgak kwangge without even knowing that word, just because you knew the Chinese word. And a lot of these advanced vocabularies will be exactly the same in all three languages. And you can just swap them between them as long as you know how to read them in Korean. Um, and then let's see. Okay. So if you want to read it specifically, uh, the reason why I said you might want to, you, you'll still need to know how to read it. If you want to be good at Korean is because it still, still appears today in a lot of things, specifically newspapers, we'll use it. You'll see hanja used a lot in newspapers today for certain things. Numbers, 
names, as in like country names or people's names. Um, you'll also see it used in advertisements. If you go on a bus or a train, you take a subway, um, next time you go to Korea, take some pictures of the advertisements. You might be able to locate some Chinese characters used in these regular modern day advertisements that you might think um, there wouldn't be any Chinese today, but no, you'll find, you'll find advertisements sometimes will use Chinese characters in them. Like for example, I saw a advertisement for a clinic in Korea. Then they did a nose surgery there and they had the Chinese character for nose and they had it add, look kind of looked like a person's nose. They like redrew it to, to, be, to look like a person's nose. Um, they have a lot of beauty advertisements where they use the character me, which means beauty. And they'll, they'll use it like, are you satisfied with your me? And it has a picture of your beauty and then it'll say like, take care of you. It's kind of like using it as a pun. Um, you'll see lots of Chinese characters used in advertisements and newspapers today. So yes, they're still very much used in Korea. It's just kind of hidden. Okay, so that's the end of the introduction. So now we are done with the intro. <laughs> so let's let's get into our first hanja. Uh, let me just check the chat for a moment. Junbihada. Yes, Junbihada is another one. Okay, yes. So um, the, the obvious ones are the numbers. And like I said, today's lesson is not about learning how to write hanja. We wouldn't have enough time for that, unfortunately. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The hanja for one to ten. The hanja for one hundred, one thousand, ten thousand. And then uh, I think it's a hundred, what would that be? A hundred million? Or is it ten million? Oh yeah, that one. Oh, okay. Oh uh, yeah. So Chinese characters are still used today for for any time you're writing Korean numbers. Uh, you might know the ones one, two, three, um, but if you're interested in learning which ones you really should learn first, I would say first of all learn all the numbers. So learn all the numbers in Hanja first, and we're not going to be covering those. Like I said, it would be take take too long to teach you how to write all of those. But if you just search. Numbers one through 10 in Hanja, not Chinese. Be careful, Chinese actually looks different. That's what I should also say, okay. So Chinese and Japanese and Korean all originally use, chi use Chinese characters, but they're different. Chinese uses a simplified version of what the traditional characters originally looked like. Japanese uses their own different system of simplified characters. And Korean uses traditional. So if you actually are wondering which country uses the original official Chinese words, well, Korea's ones are older. Korea's ones are more traditional than the others. China's is a more simplified version so that they can write more quickly. Japanese is a different system of simplified characters. So some of the characters might look differently in Chinese, Korean, and Japanese. Even very simple characters can appear slightly different depending on which language you're using. So be careful. If you write a character and someone tells you, oh, that's wrong, but you're sure it's right, <clears throat> ask them what language they speak because they might be, they might be correct that it's wrong for their language, but it's correct in Korean. And there are a lot of characters like that. So today we're only doing Korea because there are different ways to write different characters in the different languages. Um, so yeah, first to learn the numbers, one to, t one to 10. Actually, all right, I'll go ahead and write them down. Okay. Seven, eight, nine, 10. The numbers one to 10, these are the most important numbers that you should know. Um, they're used really all the time. And you can see these used like ch book chapters, um, volume numbers for dictionaries. You'll see these used all the time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And originally, as I kind of quickly mentioned, these would have represented probably like a pictograph of a hand making these different numbers. But these days they've changed so much. They don't look anything like that anymore. Um, also, you want to learn the days of the week. So. The numbers are, of course, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The days of the week are 월요일, 화요일, 수요일, 목요일, 금요일, 토요일, 일요일. Like that, right? Well, those, the first syllable of each of the days of the week 
is actually, well, actually the whole word is from Chinese directly. So you have wo, and the, again, I'm writing these really quickly because we don't have much time. Wo for uh, Monday, hua for Tuesday, uh, su, sorry, I wrote that wrong. Let's write that, okay. Uh, bo, kum, to, and then ir. So, woyuir, hayuir, suyuir, moguir, kumuir, toyuir, iryuir. These, what they actually mean are, they're from Chinese. Wo actually means moon. And that's why the word is Monday, moon day, moon. Hua is fire, Tuesday. Su is water. Bok is tree or wood. Kum is gold. To is like earth or dirt. And ir is sun, as we learned before. Sunday, Sunday. So actually the word, the these uh, words were picked for the names of the week actually because of the calendar that uh, we use in uh, not just the US, but in Europe as well, the Gregorian calendar. And it comes from the same words. So like, you know, mo Monday, Tuesday, uh, Thursday was actually from Thor's day, which I think was the planet Jupiter or Saturn or something like that. So this is the same character they also use for the planets as well. Um, anyway, so <laughs> that, that, that'll be another fun lesson we could get into if you want. But so the days of the week, you also want to know how to write the days of the week as well as reading them. But if you don't know how to do that, it's still, you get still 90% of the benefit if you only know how to, what the sound is of the characters and what the sound means. So if you only learn that wo means uh, moon, wo, moon, hua, fire, su, water, bo, tree, kum, gold, to, earth or dirt, Ir, sun, if you only learn that and don't learn these characters, you'll still get over 90%. You'll still get almost all of the benefit of knowing Chinese characters. You just wouldn't be able to read them if you saw them on a sign. But yeah, so if you see something like wo, yo il, you know, that's Monday. Yo il means day. Um, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna keep going. The next thing that you really wanna make sure that you know is country names. Now, country names are actually a combination of two different uh, characters. There's fir the first character will be part of the country's name from Chinese. So in Chinese, they would have a name for every single country using Chinese characters. That first character or that name combined with the Chinese character for country. Uh, sorry, I haven't written this stuff in so long. I think that comes last. Okay, like that. Yeah. Kuk. Kuk. If you see a word that ends in kuk, most of the, it's most likely going to mean it's from the Chinese word country. So if you have something like chungguk, meaning China, well, chung actually has its own different character, and chungguk means chung, chi, this country, kuk, country. So every single country's name will end in kuk, most of them anyway, not all of them. A lot of countries will end in kuk because kuk means a country by itself. So that's why you get chungguk, bi guk, han guk, but not every country. You also get ilbon, Japan, or togil, Germany, like that. But a lot of countries' names end in kuk. I would recommend knowing this first character for a lot of the major countries. So I'll give you a few examples. Um, chung. This is for China. So learn that chung is China. Il for sun, right, is Japan. Um, Han, so it's actually, oh, I wish these characters weren't so, uh, weren't so big, so I could just do them more quickly. Han, and please don't learn how to write them for me because you want to learn them more slowly than this. I think like that. No, this, this goes up here. Okay, Han. And learn that learn just the first characters for the countries because if you're reading a newspaper, these are the most likely characters that you're going to see used. They'll simply show the character for the country, and then they'll talk about it. And you'll have to know that that was the character for the country. They're not talking about the character for sun here. They're using ir from actually ir bon Japan, but they'll just refer to it as ir or han from Han Kuk Korea. They'll just refer to it as han. So they might show a news article that says like han. 
uh, 50 million dollars. And they'll use 50 million also written in Chinese character. And then they'll talk about like some debt repaying to some business or something like that, you know, whatever they want to talk about. But they would just write this. They wouldn't write Han Kuk in regular Korean, the alphabet, because this is much shorter and it sounds more fancy, I guess. So you'll see a lot of this used in newspapers. So learn the first words of the countries as well as uh, England, <clears throat> Young, England, uh, Tuk for Germany, and any other country that you want to learn that you're a part of. So the numbers the days of the week, and country names. Those are the first three things that you should learn for Hanta. Okay, now let's get on to some specifics. So we're going to be learning some Hanta actually today. I said we're not really gonna be learning any, but we will, we'll learn some. Um, the first Hanta character that we're going to learn is this one. Now this one is pronounced as Te, and it means big, big to be big. So there are other characters also that would be read as te, but if you see a word that starts with the, with the sound te, you can guess it might be, probably is, it probably is, a word that means big something. For example, the word hakyo. Hakyo is also a Chinese word. It com comes straight from hanta and it means school. Well, te hakyo, actually is literally big school. Now, what is a big school? Well, big school is used to refer to college or university. In that way, it's a big school. You know, there's a big campus, lots of classes, much bigger than a high school or junior high or elementary school. A big school is a university. So that's why the word teakyo is the way that it is. It's just the way that it is. Uh, the next one we're gonna learn so let me put this up here, because we're still gonna use it. Okay, the next one we're gonna learn is Chung. Now this is also the word that, this is also the character that they use for the name Chungguk for China. Chung actually means middle. As in you're in the middle of something. And it originally was drawn to be a line going through the center of a circle, originally, a long time ago. Now it's a, now it's a square. And this character, Te, also, is originally a drawing of a man with their arms out like this and their legs spread to look really big. So a lot of these characters have drawings like that. And if you're interested in that, ask me at the end. I have a book I can show you that's great for teaching a lot of that type of stuff that I love that book. Chung means middle. So middle, Chungguk, literally means middle country. Middle, kuk, country. But you also know the word Chunghakyo. Chungakyo. What is Chungakyo? Well, you might have learned the word Chungakyo separately. You probably didn't learn it with Hancha. Chungakyo literally means middle school. Middle school. So if you forgot what the word Chungakyo means suddenly while talking, but you remembered, <laughs> let's say you, were, you still remembered the Hancha, you still remembered that there is a Hancha that means middle that's uh, said as Chung, you could still remember this word as Chungakyo, as middle school, because you would know that. So, Teakyo, big school, university, Chungakyo, middle school. And it does, it means junior high school or middle school. Okay, let's put this up here. Uh, the next one we're gonna learn is, oh yeah, let's just do this one. This one is So, and So means small. So now we've done big, middle, and small. Let's put this one up here. So, you can't just say so hakyo. They don't say small school like that. Um, but like it, does, it doesn't mean you can just make up a new word if you know the Chinese characters, but it does mean you might be able to recognize the word. For example, um, a really common place when you'll see these three characters is in a menu on a restaurant. So maybe you'll go to, um, you'll go to a Chinese restaurant in Korea and you'll want to order tang suyuk. Tang suyuk is kind of like sweet and sour pork. Sweet, yeah, it's like sweet and sour fried pork and you dip it in sauce and it's great. So if you look at the menu, you'll see something that looks like this. This is what you'll see on the menu, tang suyuk. Now, Koreans can all read this. They know big, medium, small. So, te, chung, so. 
And that's how you can order it. Big, so a large, a medium, and a small. Now, that doesn't mean coffee shops will have this. Coffee shops will have their own names for the, the dish, the cups or whatever. But so is typically how menus will write it. And you'll see a lot of menus which will just have these symbols on it because it's easier just to write these symbols than to have to write small size or big size or anything like that in Korean because these mean big, medium, small just by themselves. Am I going too fast? Is this okay? Is this speed okay? Because I have a lot more to do. <laughs> Let me just check the chat for a second. So is a bunch of stuff. Yeah, it just if you see the word so, it doesn't mean that it always means small. There are other words and other Chinese, as well as other Chinese characters that would also be pronounced as so, as such as well the Korean word so, which is not a Chinese word. It's okay. Because yeah, the, I actually, if I were to do like a full proper Korean hancha lesson, this is going to be like 50 pages of like a hundred, at least a hundred, minimum, bare minimum, like a hundred or so characters or more. So we're trying to do this as fast as possible. The next one is high, ko, as in nopta, to be like a high level, like high up. Ko means high. So this is the word they actually use for high school. They don't just say ko hakyo, high school, but they actually say high grade, high, high grade school. Uh, they use a different hanta for dung. Uh, which we're not going to be learning today separately, but they use ko dung and dung just means level Like a level or a class. So literally you're saying a high level ko dung hakyo Ko dung hakyo means high school or literally high level school So if you see ko, you might be able to guess that it's high high something. Well, what else can be high? This can be high. Oops. Again, if there's anyone watching who's um, actually Chinese, I apologize. I'm doing my best writing these. This one is kup. Kup means a level by itself, as in like a skill level. So skill level is kup. So if you see the word ku gup, what do you think that means? Well. I, I can just tell you, probably guess. Advanced. So, kuga means literally high skill level or advanced. Well, let's say that, okay, let's say that you learn the word kuga, okay? You master the word kuga and you know that word. But you're talking to your friend and they say, what Korean level is your friend over there? Oh, my friend isn't high level. He's, my friend's not kuga. Uh, he's intermediate. How do I say intermediate? Well, you would have to normally look it up in the dictionary to find the word intermediate. Or you could guess. You could say, well, kuga. Ku means high. So I'm not going to say it's high. I want to say it's medium, right? Or less than high, something lower. Chung. Middle. Chung Chunggup. Medium level. And that's actually the correct word for intermediate. You know, in English, intermediate, mediate, middle, intermediate. Intermediate level, Google advanced. Um, so you can do a lot of stuff with this. And then if you wanted to say beginner, well, you'd need to know the word for beginner or begin at least. Um, the actual Chinese character for begin is this one. Uh, da, da, da. This one's chu. Chu means begin or like elementary. Like beginning, so chu. So you could say chu ge, beginning level. Now you only have to memorize ge once, and if you memorize ku, chung, and chu separately, you can make these words, or at least at the very least, help you remember the words for the future. So you're not going to accidentally say chung ge when you meant to say ku ge ever, because you know at least you'll know that chung means middle. So you know, wait. It's not chungup. It's not chungup. At least you'll know that. So it really helps you to memorize words because you'll have more ways to associate each word with it with another one. I'm just like, I looked over at how many people are watching. There's still 174. I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm so surprised. I'm glad you guys are following along. Um, but I really want a lot of you guys to get interested in Hanta because it really is useful the more that you know. 
Um, but we're not done with that. So you have chu, which means elementary or like beginning, kind of like that sense, like the, the start of something. Well, let's go back to our school example. We want to say elementary school. Well, how would we say elementary school? It actually just so happens to be chu dung. Remember I, I taught you that before is like a class or a level. Chu dung hakyo. So now you've only learned hakyo once. You've learned tung for high level, for a high or a beginner. And now you knew teakyo, chungakyo, kodengakyo, or teakyo, kodengakyo, chungakyo, and cho dengakyo. And this cho is actually part, the part itself that means elementary. This dung is just a level. So like cho dung literally means elementary class, high school, or elementary class, sorry, elementary class school. And ko dung is high class level school. Chung hakyo is middle school. Te hakyo is a big school. So if you remember these through their characters, it can help you to not forget what they mean. Okay, let's do a more, let's do a more advanced example. Oops, sorry, there. Okay, this one is chur. Chur, you know the word churbai, to leave? Churbai, and it was a regular word. Churbai is just means to leave. Chur by itself is a character that means exiting. So an exit, so exiting something. Well, there's another useful character that is this, ku. Ku just means a mouth or like an opening, an opening of something. So like there's an opening in the doorway or whatever. Chugu is the regular word for an exit. So if you're looking for the exit, chu ku. Well, let me tell you something else then. What if I tell you that this one, okay. This one is eep and it means enter, like going in, something goes in something. If you see a word and it has eep in it, you can guess it has something to do with entering, going in somewhere. So what do you think the word eepku means? It's also a totally normal Korean word, eepku. You can probably guess what it means. Let me just check the chat. I'm sure some of you guys have already written it down. Let's see who can get it. Who gets it? Ehimang, they're smiling, showing off her Japanese, writing kuchi. Yes, that's what it means. This is actually the character for kuchi in Japanese as well. Entrance, yes, that's right, entrance. Good job, I, I knew you guys would do it. I knew you guys could do it. So. Now this doesn't seem like a huge deal. You might just think, well, I can just learn chugu and ipu separately. Yeah, you can. But what if you were to see this word? Actually, let me write this over here. Okay, for one, knowing ipu and chugu helps you never get them confused. You'll never be like, oh wait, which one's the entrance and the exit? I always get those words confused. You'll never get them confused. You'll know chu means exit. So chu, even if you forget the one of the words, you will never confuse ipku with chugu. Whereas normally beginners can confuse chugu and ipku, right? Because they both sound, they both have ku at the end and they both mean some sort of entrance or exit. But now you'll never confuse them. Another thing is, what if you saw this word? So I remember when I was in Korea and I actually knew a lot of Chinese characters already when I studied Korean. Um, and I saw a sign that said churipku. And my friend was really confused. He's like, what is churipku? I know ipku, but what's a churipku? I don't know what that is. What do you think chur ipku might mean? So this is a completely brand new word to you guys, as it would be to me when I first saw it. But knowing chur and knowing ip, what do you think chur ipku means? Yeah, the, well, the Chinese guy, you can't do it. Your name is written in Chinese. <clears throat> Noah Deeps, you got it, yeah. Ile, doorway, yeah. Youngwi, in and out, Tessa S. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> yes, chur, exit, enter, uh, doorway, you know, a, a sort of, some sort of opening. So it's an opening, it's a place for entering and exiting. And you might see a place, maybe there's like one entrance or exit for the entire building. So that would be labeled as the chur ipku. Now, if you see this chur ipku, you don't have to learn it as, you don't have to write down necessarily chur ipku into your notebook and study that. 
right? Because you know already, chu means exit, ip means entrance. So as long as you know chu gu and ip gu by themselves already, you could guess chu ip gu also means exit, enter. That's the opening where you exit and enter. So if I were to attach um, a character onto a, a word you already know, it's not going to suddenly seem like a brand new word to you. Now you can kind of think about it, I mean, more as you learn more characters, you'll be able to think about it as a regular word plus some sort of additional meaning that you get. So let's do another example. Um, I remember I told you that this character, I think it's this way. Yeah, oh, okay, oh, sorry. I wrote that wrong, but anyway, like this. Okay, this means kook, so this is country. So let's give you another brand new word. I guarantee you've never seen this word before unless you're advanced. Chugu kada. Chugu kada. Can you guess what this word means? Guys, take a, take a guess. What do you think this word might mean? Now, I told you there could be other characters that have chu and other characters that have guk, but I'm not going to try to confuse you that much yet. Chugu kada. Yeah, chugu kada. To go abroad, to leave the country. Yep. Chugu kada literally means exit country. Now, what if you see, now I can already, I'm, I'm already sure you guys can guess what the next word I'm going to give you is. Ipku kada. Ipku. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that every single word of these is, you need to, you need to memorize these words separately. You can also just say, literally in Korean, hanguk e turo oda, literally to enter into Korea. But there will be a lot of times when you'll see chuguk used. Like chulguk narita, the date of departing the country. That would be written on a document. And you'd have to be like, look through your dictionary, like, oh, what is chulguk narita? I don't know that word. It's really complicated. Korean so hard. Whereas really you knew these Chinese characters. You're like, oh, chulguk na. Okay, the date of leaving the country. Oh, ipguk narita, date, date of entering the country. You don't have to memorize these words separately and stress about, you know, reviewing words that you're never going to use, but you might see sometimes. So knowing these hancha characters really helps um, to learn things a lot more fast. Okay, let's do some more. Um, this one I already did. This one's ir for it means day. Uh, this one is. Actually, I think I did that one out of order. This one's week. Oh yeah, don't copy the way I'm writing it. I'm just doing it um, really quick. This is ju, this is week, uh, this is month, war, this is, oh yeah, that's right, this way. Du, du, du. This is nyang, this is year. So if you see a word that has <coughs> ju or war or nyan or ir, you can, Guess that it has something to do with day, week, month, or year. So I'm going to give you a new character and I'm going to teach you one, two, three, four different words. Yeah, I'm going to teach you four new words by only telling you one character. So first of all, again, ir means day, chu means week, wor means one, month, and yan means year. You know how you say like, uh, 2018 yan, 2019 yan, not 2019, the year 2019. Uh, 이일, or you, 삼일, three days, you know, like that. These are the normal words. They're actually all from Chinese. So let's learn a new character. This one. Da, 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 da. Okay, this is 매. 매. You'll see 매 used a lot. It always comes at the very beginning of a word, so the very start of a word, and it means every. Each or every. Okay, so just... You don't need to memorize, so I want to make this clear again, you don't need to memorize how to write or how to read these unless you're really interested in, in being able to read everything you see in Korea. But you can still use the concepts just in speaking. Even, even in speaking alone, you can still use all of these hancha concepts to benefit you. So just to kind of illustrate that, I'm just going to erase these because I think it's not important we're focusing on these right now. Ir, chu, wo, yan, and mei means every. So if I give you a new word, I want you to guess what this word means.
There, now you know four new words by learning one word. So you've, you've only learned one character, me, means every. Now you can learn four new words that you're going to easily memorize. You don't have to stress about memorizing them now. Boom, you now know four new words, if you didn't already know them. So what do these words mean? Yongwi, I think in traditional Chinese and Korean, yes. Um, it, it has that. Yeah, Korean uses the traditional style. Every day, every week, every month, every year. Yes, that's it. So you don't have to memorize separate words so much for every day, week, month, and year if you just know that these are from Chinese. So, oh, they're from Chinese. I can stick, I can work with them like with Chinese characters. I can add other Chinese characters onto them. Yes. May you every day, May you every week, May what every month, May nyan every year. Now you got four new letters. And if you were to see these words, the most important thing isn't just being able to use it, but if someone else were to use these words and you didn't know, say you say that you had learned May year by itself, you only knew May year separately. You know, a textbook would probably teach May year means every day. So you just learn. Oh, year is day, but May year is every day. Okay, huh? Interesting. If someone were to then say to you May word. You would have to learn that word separately, right? You'd be like, what's May word? Oh, you look it up in your dictionary. Oh, every month. No, no. Now you just know oh, the May in May means every. So May word. More means month. So every month. And there you go. Uh, let's see. How are we on time? Three, oh, it's three o'clock now. Okay. We're doing okay on time. Whew. I just passed where I needed to be. So I feel good about that. I was getting all stressed like rushing. Okay, the next one we're going to learn is a really simple one. This is nam. And nam means man. And this one is yo, or it could be nyo, depending on how, how it comes in the word. Sometimes nyo, especially if it doesn't come at the beginning of the word, it'll be read as nyo. At the beginning of the word, it just becomes yo. That's not because the character has two different readings. It's just due to sound change rules. So it actually is, this character actually is just pronounced as nyo. However, this letter often in sound change rules, um, and there's another, there's more sound change rules that have to do with Chinese characters. We're not going to go into those, but it's just read as yo at the start of a word. So this one means woman or female, whatever you want to interpret it as male and woman right here. Um, another common character is ja. We're not going to talk about it, but ja just means a type of a person. <clears throat> so, you know, the regular word nam ja means literally a man person. Because nam by itself wouldn't mean a man in Korea. They use the word nam ja to mean an actual person. Nam ja, you know, nam ja chingu, a boy friend. Yo ja, a woman. Yo ja, nam ja, like that. Nam by itself and cha by itself. These are two separate Chinese characters that combine to mean a person. Nam ja, yo ja. Well, just nam and yo by itself, though, also can be used with other characters to mean a male or a female version of that. So I'm going to tell you, actually, I'm not even going to give you the word. How would I say in Korean? So I hope you don't already know this word. You may probably don't. The word for a male student. So let's say that you wanted to say now at your school, your school has all, your school is an all male student school. How would you say male student? Take a guess. Take a guess. How would you say male student? And if you're a beginner, like low beginner, don't worry, this is probably not ready for you yet. But if you're a high beginner, you might be able to get this. Ile. Yeah. Nam haksing. Nam haksing. That's right. Nam. And now you know haksing. Haksing, I didn't actually teach you this separately, but haksing, the word for student, is also from Chinese. Haksing. You can take haksing and you can attach nam. I was going to tell you this word. I just figured I'd see if you guys could get it before I wrote it. Nam haksing means male student. And now you could also say yo haksing. So now you can not only say student, but you can also say nam haksing, yo haksing without having to memorize a separate word. Like you don't have to know the word nam haksing and yo haksing in your mind. You can just know if you want to say a male student, you attach nam. So you can say, oh, it's nam haksing. And then you can say ta nam haksing yeo. 
or ta namjayo, they're all boys. They're all boy students, whatever you want to say. Or you can say like, uh, the school has 50% nam haksing and 50% yo haksing, like that. But we're not done. Let's do one more with these. Um, the other words you know, nam dong seng, yo dong seng, are also from here. Dong seng meaning a younger sibling. If you just say dong seng, it just means your younger sibling. It doesn't mean male or female. If you want to specify that it's a younger brother, nam dong seng. If you want to specify that's a younger sister, yo dong seng. So that's where these words also come from too. So now that you know nam means guy, you don't have to confuse nam dong seng, nam hak seng, or yo dong seng, or anything like that, because you'll know that when you're thinking of the word, you'll think nam boy, yo female, like that. Uh, let's see. Check here. <laughs> a bunch of, bunch of people writing Chinese characters in the chat. That's cool. I'm glad some of you guys are familiar with uh, Chinese characters. Okay. Um, let's do a, another example. We're not done with these male, female things yet, but one more example. Okay. This is Wang. Okay. Wang. Wang means king. It's a regular Korean word. It means king. Uh, specifically, Wang is just male king, right? This is a boy. But what if you wanted to say a queen? Can you guys guess? Uh, you could. I'll let you know you guys could guess this one. Um, what would be the word for queen? Can you guess what the word for queen would be? Yeah. Hey, you guys are good. Yo Wang. Yeah, throw away. That's right. Yo Wang. So if you know that Wang is Chinese, then you can know, oh, it's Chinese. I can work with it. Let me let me tell you something else. Um, do you know the king? Do you know King Sejong? You probably heard his name. King Sejong's name was Sejong. So that's, that's his name, his kingly name. Sejong Te Wang. Taewang. What do you think Taewang means? What do you think Taewang means? Take a guess. I'm I'm making a lot of assumptions. I'm assuming I'm just I'm making you guys guess a lot of stuff here, but you guys are doing pretty good. Yeah, Sebu Sol. You're right. Big king. Literally, great as in large. Te Wang. Big king. King. Now, it doesn't mean that every te means great, but in this case, big. this one does. It means big, a big king. So as in, not big as in like he's fat. Actually, he, probably, he was really fat. Uh, he died from diabetes and he didn't exercise and he just ate meat all day. Uh, yeah, he was really, yeah, he was really big. But uh, te as in great, like a great person. So the kancha te means big, but also can mean great, like really, you know, very great, like a great building. In this case, a great King. So that's why they refer to him as Sejong the Great. Sejong Taewang, the Great King. Yeah, fun fact. Yeah, Taebak, also Taebak. Yeah, that's right. So, um, let's go on. So yeah, now that if you know that a word is Chinese, you can play around with it by adding Chinese characters before the word. Um, okay. Let's do this. Um, this one's really common. In. In. In means a person. This is the regular word for, well, the regular Chinese character they use for person. In. Um, you know it every single time you hear someone say, Hanguk in. Miguk in. You know, like that. Miguk in. Chungguk in. Ilbon in. All of this in. It actually means Han. So here you have Hanguk, the Han country person. If you have Miguk, you have America country person. Miguk in. This person is what it means. If I tell you, without drawing the Chinese character, because I said you don't really need to know necessarily all the Chinese characters, how to write them in order to benefit, that Ko is a Chinese character, just written, now let's write Ko. That means um, gigantic. 
not just large, but really big, then what do you think the word call in would mean? Yeah, 사람 is native Korean. In, you cannot ever say in by itself because in is just a piece, it's just a Chinese character used in words, but you can't just use a single Chinese character. Like you can't just say te, big, by itself to mean that something's big. But you could attach te to a Chinese word and mean big that. But there isn't, you, do, you can't just simply say the Chinese word by itself. So in, you would never just say in. 저는 인입니다. I'm a person. That makes no sense. You would say 사람. 저는 사람입니다. I'm a person. Yes, giant. A giant. Emeril is giant, giant. A <laughs> fat person. No, not a fat person. In this case, call just means gigantic as in just large, like large of stature. So call in is the regular word for a giant. So now you know a, another random Korean word. You know, this, the word giant, call in by itself, is more of an intermediate grammar, uh, sorry, intermediate vocabulary. So now you can learn it really easily. Um, if you just learn that there is a character that is read as call, I'm not going to write them all. That means gigantic. If I told you another word that had in in it and you didn't know it, you might be able to guess that this is the in for person and it has to do with something that has to do with a person. So, ingan in this case is actually the word for human, as in like humanity, like an actual human being. Ingan is the word for that. Um, but in is also from person. So this is person, and then you'd have to know how this word means person. But you can at least make educated guesses as to what a word means, or at very least, what the word might mean. You can make a guess. Well, it has this character in it. It might be from Chinese, and if so, it might mean this. Okay, let's do some more. All right, now we're actually ahead of schedule, so I can I don't have to rush so much. Okay, good. Okay, uh, the next one we're gonna do is also really common. Okay, this one is let's see, mu. This one is mu, and it means to not exist. In Korean, they also have a verb that means to not exist, and that's opta. 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 To not exist. This is read as mu. Mu. Mu as in there is none of it. Now, a lot of words might start with mu. If a word starts with mu, it means this is non-existent. So that's the other thing I should add is that the Chinese language grammar is not the same as Korean. So in Korean, you would say like, I don't have any friends. Chingu opsoyo. You first say friend and then opsoyo. But Chinese grammar is more like English in the order. It's reversed from Korean. So you would just say, no friends. If you wanted to say, that's not the word we're going to learn, but if you wanted to say no friends, Korea, Chinese would do it by saying simply, there are no friends, just like English. Korean, it's only reversed. So mu would come at the beginning of some sort of combination where you're making a word. Uh, in this case, we're going to learn a word. I'm going to tell you that there is a hanja with the sound ryo. When it's at the beginning of the word, it's only read as yo. But at the middle of a word or any other anywhere else in the word, it's actually read as yo. So this yo actually means a fee. A fee. Like an amount that you have to pay. You know, money. If I told you the word buryo and you didn't know this word, I, this is actually a basic word. You probably knew this before you knew this. But if you didn't know this word, you could guess that mu, ryo, means no fee. There is no fee. And this is actually the word for free. Mu ryo. Mu ryo. There's another word too. This is another word. Mu ryo means literally no fee. Free. You get it for free. If I were to tell you another word. This is a regular Korean word. Chokgun. Now, it's actually pronounced as chokgun, but it's not written that way. Chokgun. Chokgun means a condition, as in a requirement in order to do something, like conditional. Well, what if I were to say, what if I had this word, 
조건. So I know that 조건 means like a condition, like I'll only agree under these three conditions. In that sense, it means condition. And it's a regular intermediate word. But let's say you wanted to say there are no conditions. It's not, it's not conditional. It's, con, it's unconditional, right? There's no, there are no conditions. Well, you can attach wu here to give the meaning of no condition. And now you have the act in English, we would say unconditionally. Unconditionally, or however you'd use it in the sentence. Unconditionally. Literally, no conditions. <clears throat> and you can make these sort of words up just by knowing the Chinese characters, and as long as you're sure that the word's from Chinese. The next one is kind of related to mu. This one is you. <clears throat> this one means to exist. So in Korean, they also have a verb that means to exist, and that's itta. Itta means to exist. Like you might say, I have friends. 저는 친구가 있어요. Maybe you say you have a lot of friends or whatever. 많이 있어요. But anyway, 있어요, this you means to that there is. There, it does exist. So how would you say then that something costs money? If 무료 means free, What's the opposite of mudio? What do you think is the opposite word for mudio? And you'll, you'll be correct if you guess. Well, unless you guess wrong, then you'll be wrong. What's your guess? Yeah, no star five, yudio, amaryllis, yudio. Yes, you're correct. If so, unicorn mixer, yudio, Noah Deeps, Duke Fleet, throw away, Daniel Campbell. You guys are good. <laughs> you guys are good. Okay. Yes. So now you know that the word yudio literally means it has a cost. So if you ask your friend, uh, your friend says, oh, I watched it. I watched a movie on the internet. And you would say, how did you watch it? And they would say, blah, 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 blah. Yudio, something, something, something. That means they paid money to watch it. They didn't watch it, mudio. They watched it, yudio. Now, I don't know a good translation for this in English. You might just say not for free, I guess. But now, it since you know that the meaning of this syllable, sorry, the meaning of this, uh, yeah, syllable, you is exists, you don't necessarily have to stress so much about the translation that you write down in your book because you know what it literally means. Exists a fee. There is a fee. Mudio. There is not a, there is not a fee. In this case, free is a regular English word. But in this case, we don't really say, like, there's not really an easy way to, to translate it. Maybe we would just say costs money. It costs money, right? But you don't have to worry too much about the exact word you translate it to in English because you know exactly what it means in Korean now. Okay. All right. Nice, nice. You're doing good. We're 20 minutes ahead of schedule. Um, <clears throat> And we have finished covering the Chinese characters that we're going to do today. So I want I actually originally wanted to do like, um, we have still some more notes though. I wanted to do a bunch more characters today, but I actually don't want to overwhelm you guys with this gigantic whole new world of Korean material. More so, I want you to focus on the sounds and the meanings, not how to write or read the characters. Of course, being able to write and read them will help. You might see the, the character for Mu. You might see that character for mu used with like, uh, it might say mu and then in Korean, like no pain or, you know, no, um, no dissatisfaction or, you know, no um, fees or whatever. They'll say no, they might use that character mu in place of regular hangul on an advertisement. But other than being able to read advanced Korean material and write it, I wouldn't focus on reading and writing. Just know that there is a character that has the sound of mu. And that that character can mean does not exist. Just that alone, just that alone for each character that you learn is good enough. That will be the major, the, the bulk of the help that you'll get from lear learning Korean. Just knowing that. So if you see a word and you want to and you want to make the opposite and the word starts with mu, you switch it to you. Or if you say a word, see a word that has um, so for small and you want to make the opposite, I think it should be this. You can probably switch it for te to make to mean big instead of small. So that's kind of the thinking that I want you to start to go into is that hanja can be useful, especially for vocabulary. 
but not focusing so much on how to read it and write it. Um, now, I did want to make a note, though, that knowing Hunter, let's see, knowing Hunter will help you to recognize new words in context. As I was kind of showing you, you can learn Hunter and you can recognize new words. Um, but you don't necessarily know, have to know every single Hunter. Like I said, there's 1800. If you want, you can learn all of them. I probably know most of them, but I can't write most of them. I can only write a few dozen of them. Um, but that's probably similar to most Korean. Korean names also have hanja in them. So for example, every Korean person's last name has a hanja with it. Uh, Kim, this is actually the hanja for Kim, but it's originally kum for gold. But when it's used for a person's name, it's read as Kim. Um, every single person's name in Korean has a hanja associated with their last name. Uh, their first names might or might not have hanja. If it's two syllables though, typically then there are hanja, but not always. But typically if their name has two symbols, there will also be hanja associated with their name when they picked it. So you can ask your Korean friends, how do they write their name in hanja? I, I guarantee you the majority of them won't know, but some of them will know. Some of them will know the characters that are in their name. So you can ask them and you can figure out what the characters mean. So they might use the same character, like for example, someone's name might be um, uh, Su Jung, right? Su Jung. Now there's a word Su Jung in Korean, which just means crystal, but that doesn't mean they're all using the exact same Chinese characters for their name. They could have a different Su, there's one that means water, there could be a different one, the different character for Jung, and find out which characters that they use for their name and you can figure out exactly what their name really means because just the name Su Jung by itself doesn't have any meaning until you attach Chinese characters to it. And then if you ask your friend, they might tell you, oh yes, well, it's the Su character for this and the Chung character for this. And it means like a uh, pure water or whatever. They'll have some meaning to it. So ask them. But the last name meaning does means absolutely is completely useless. You do not need to know the meaning of someone's last name. It's simply passed on through the father's uh, last name. So it's completely unrelated to the meaning of a person's name. A last name. So don't worry about the last name. Don't be like, oh, your last name means gold. That's pretty cool. No, it, they're not going to care about that. It's just everyone has the same last name as their dad. There's not that many last names in Korea. It's not something that they would take pride in, but their first names, they would be interested in, they, they would care more about what the meaning of their name is, not their last name. Okay. Now let's go into a little bit more advanced notes. <clears throat> so people have asked me a lot, how do I look up hanja? If there's say I see a, okay, let's say I see this hanja like before, I see this hanja and I'm like, how do I read that, right? I see it on the sign, how could I possibly read that, Billy? Well, um, the really the easiest way to, to do that is just looking it up online, as in drawing it online. There are other ways to look up hanja. For example, if I'm looking up hanja, there are other ways. I can, there are a few ways actually. One is counting how many strokes there are. I, and, but in order to do that, you have to know how to draw it because some things might look like four strokes, but it's actually one, two, three strokes. One, two, three, just like the miam in Korean, the letter. This is actually three strokes, even though it might look like four strokes, it's three. So you have to know how to write the Chinese character in order to look it up by this, how many strokes they have. And a lot of characters would have the same number of strokes. You'd have to like search through a million characters to find it. But if it's a char complicated character, you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So you can search for characters with 11 strokes and you'll find in there, um, Mu. Another way to look up characters is by looking up them based on the radical. This is a concept I haven't gone into, but in Korean, um, every character, well, most characters that look kind of complicated are actually combinations of multiple pieces. So it's kind of like Legos. Let me give you an example. Um, yeah, let's do this. So the word Hangugol in Korean, Hangugol for the Korean language, this all well, first, Hanguk is Korea. This all itself is also a Chinese character originally. And the way it's written is like this. 
This is all. And this means words. Speech. Mm, peach. Just check the chat for a second. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this means words or speech. But it's actually not one character. Originally, this is one character now. Originally, this is actually a combination of three different characters. Well, actually, four different characters if we really break it apart. But two main radicals. It's not good to really think of these characters as being in pieces, though, except when you're writing them. Because really, in meaning, the, this only has one meaning. But it originally came from two, the combination of two other characters. This, which you can see right here. And this one, which I'll put it over here. And this. This character's sound is originally O. And this character means me, I. And it's from Chinese. O, originally. This is a character that means, that's, pro that's pronounced as on. On. On means words or language like that. Like words or speech, like talking. Basically, let's just write talking. Speech. So, literally, this character is actually a combination of the concepts speaking my mind, speaking me, speaking what I want to say. So, I speak a language. So, what I speak is all. I speak all. So, these two radicals. As in radical, I mean a piece of a character. I'll write it up here. I'll tell you, tell you so, a little bit. These two radicals combine to form a new character, which is pronounced as all, and literally means me speaking, but it just means speech. So Hanguk all means Korean, speech or Korean language. And anytime you see all attached to the end of a country's name or attached to any anything, it probably means the language of that. So you can also make a joke with someone, like maybe your friend is speaking really hard to understand and you're making fun of him. Then you could say, let's say his name's uh, Bill, Billy, you can say he's speaking Billy all. Billy all. And then it sounds like, a, it, that because you've done this, now it sounds like some official country's name, sorry, official country's language. So now it sounds like there's some country named Billy and that's the language that they speak in that country. So you can kind of make your own jokes like by knowing that all is a separate Chinese character because you know that it means language and it attaches onto the end of something to mean the language of that. So the other way to look up characters, which is kind of what I was you know, getting into this tangent from, is that you look up the individual radicals. So you would first search for the radical on this one and then you'd search for the radical o, and then you'd put them together and it would tell you, oh, there's a you know, five characters that have these radicals together. Pick the one it is. And you'd say, oh, it's this one, like that. But the problem with looking up characters this way is you already have to pretty much be a master of hunter by that point. So this method is only useful as a research tool if you're already very good at hunter. So say you already know hunter really well and you know all these characters, but you see this new random character that you've never seen before, but you know the radicals in it. Maybe you can't count the stroke order, it's too small or uh, maybe you tried counting the stroke order and you couldn't find it. And you tried drawing it, but it wouldn't recognize it. But you know the radicals in it. You're like, oh, it's that radical, that radical, that one, that one, that one. So you put them in. Then the computer says, oh, it could only be this one character. And it shows you this character. It's this old archaic character. You know, it was only used a thousand years ago. Like that. So you can use radical search for finding hard to find characters. But I wouldn't recommend it for finding basic characters ever. Because it, you would have to already know this in order to be able to do that. You have to know that this is two main radicals. And then even this character is also two different radicals. It's five and mouth. This one also, this is words and mouth. So you have to learn a, a lot about that separately. So I don't recommend looking up characters by radicals. The only way I would recommend is by drawing them on the internet. As a beginner, when you see a character that you don't know, you can search. Um, draw Chinese characters, or just draw Chinese or Japanese, whatever, online. 
and it'll find it'll find these Korean characters as well. They'll be sim similar enough. Draw Chinese or draw Korean Hanta online. You'll find some websites. Draw it. It'll give you a box, and you just draw it. You'll be like, uh, with your mouse like this, you know. It, you'll do this with your mouse, and somehow the computer will co correctly identify it as this one because the computer knows what direction you're going in and how many times you're letting go of the mouse button. So searching it by drawing it is the easiest way, the fastest way to find the character. That's the only method though I can recommend because the other ones, like I said, require knowing a lot of stuff. Counting the characters too, requires knowing a lot about how to write them. And I think counting is the least accurate too of the methods because if you don't know, if you don't know a certain radical in the word, then you don't know how many strokes it has. So you'll count it wrong unless you know how it's drawn already. Um, for advanced learners who are here, this is the word for radical in Korean. I'm sorry, the hancha term, busu. Busu means a piece of a Chinese character. It's always called a radical. Uh, let me show you my favorite book. This is my uh, this is my personal favorite book. I haven't found a better book in my entire life for learning about hanta, and uh, it's called Pusutara Hanta Yoheng. Good luck finding it though. I got it in Korea. I couldn't find it on the internet, but it's really cool. It's all in Korean, so this is not useful if you're intermediate. But it's awesome if you can read Korean. It will show you. Let me find. Let me find like a fun example. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Okay. This is, for example, it'll show you the character, what it originally used to look like, you know, a couple thousand years ago or whenever it was newer. It'll show you how that character evolved to become what it is today and what it originally symbol, sim, simplifi, simplified, what it origi originally meant. So for example, this is the character Mo. Mo is the Chinese word for, well, in Korean, it's the Hancha word for uh, fur. It's like fur on an animal. It shows you what it originally would have been drawn to represent. So it shows like the butt of an animal with a tail. And then it shows you what it would have been originally written as, like this, kind of representing an animal with its tail coming out. And then how it transformed to be written right now. I'm not sure if you can see that really well. Let me see if I can hold it up so you can see that. Anyway, right there. Uh, I, probably, I can't really see. And then it gives a Korean explanation. So the shape of a tail, specifically the tail fur on some sort of beast, some sort of animal, or just the shape of fur itself. Um, and then it mentions the radical for that. Uh, another one would be this, water. This is a very common, actually, let me just write this up here. This is a very, 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 very common character. This is pronounced as su, and this means water or bul. So, su, mul. So you might be thinking, why is this water, That right? This looks nothing like water. How would this have ever been water? And the, this is just for advanced people. You don't need this if you're learning hanta. It's just really fun and I love this stuff. It originally would have been written as something like this, which does kind of look like rivers, right? It looks like rivers of water. And then over time that would have changed. They draw, they draw an example of how that would have changed. Maybe this way to make it much faster, right? If you're doing like this and stopping and going over, it takes more time. So instead they just wrote it like this. Okay, the third one like that. So it kind of gets simplified over time until it becomes this, which represents this original sort of concept of water flowing. And then it gives an explanation that 물이 흐르는 모습을 상징. So symbol, symbol, symbol of the shape of a flowing body of water is what that means in Korean. And then it shows you know how to write it and everything like that. And it goes through every single 1,800 characters. And it's really cool. I'm not advertising this book. I kind of am, but it's really cool. It's my favorite book. So if you're interested in learning more about like the origins of Hanta, you know, well, origins of Chinese, I should say, um, that's a really cool book. But so uh, there, there are reasons for why everything's written the way that it is. But I do not recommend looking up characters that way unless you're already really familiar with them because it's just a lot of extra work and it's not useful. So the last thing that I wanted to do today though, and we're still 20 minutes ahead of schedule, which is great, is this question that I've gotten thousands of times. Billy, 
What's the difference between these two words? Tegger ikta, to read a book, or Tokso der Hada. Tokso der Hada. So people have asked me a lot. What's the difference between these two words? Or let me, let me give you one more, one more example, actually, that you guys might already know. I mean, words that you would probably be more familiar with. Uh, let's say, 고르다. Yeah, let's do that. 고르다. 고르다. Or, 선택을 하다. 선택하다. 선택하다 and 고르다. 고르다 means to choose or, you know, choose, pick. And 선택하다 also means to choose or select, you know. 책을 읽다 means read a book. As does 독서를 하다. So people ask me all the time, when they find a similar word, what this is, is the first one 고르다 is a pure Korean word. And 선택하다 is a Sino-Korean word, which means it's hanja. It comes from hanja. 선택 is Chinese. 선택 meaning to choose. Here, 책을 읽다, 책을 읽다 actually is pronounced, is a pure Korean expression. 책 읽다, read a book. And 독서를 하다 is a Sino-Korean word. 독서하다. So what's the difference between these two? Um, I'm not sure if you guys know the difference between these two, but let me, give me a guess. I'm just curious. Give me a guess in uh, the chat. Oh, someone asked the, what was the name of the book? It's not the only book out there, but it's my personal favorite. I just love the way they did it. It's a uh, busu, which means radical. Dara. So following, hanta yoheng. So basically like take a trip while learning through radicals. So like a Korean, a trip, a trip through hanta. No, a trip in hancha through radicals. Something like that would be like a fun way to translate it. And it's a really cool book. But it's not the only book. It's just the old, it's just my favorite that I've found. But I'm sure if you want to search for uh, hancha, you can find tons of books, but you're not going to find very many in English. Um, Talk to Me in Korean has a cool book. They have one book on some of the basic hancha. I've never, I've never seen that book, but I heard it's really cool. If they send me a book, I'll mention it on the stream. <laughs> I don't know. If they're listening, Talk to Me in Korean, if you're listening right now, Send me a book and I'll um, show it off on the stream, the Hancha book. And, um, but yeah, this is my favorite though, it's, but it's in Korean. But I think it's fine that it's in Korean. It's, it's great. Okay, let's see if you guys have any idea about these two different ones. What about those books behind you? Oh yeah, yeah, all these books, yeah. I uh, forgot about those. <laughs> Yeah, some of you guys have got it. I've seen a few people mention it correctly. Sino-Korean sounds fancier than pure Korean or more formal. That's correct. That's really the only difference is that if you have the same word in pure Korean and Sino-Korean, the Sino-Korean word sounds a little fancier. Kind of like if you were to say, I'm going to choose one person or I'm going to select one person. Like select... I think what would be choose, select, or pick. I don't like saying I'm going to pick three or versus saying I'm going to select three. That select slightly has a little bit fan of a fancier sound than saying pick, right? It's kind of like that. Choosing versus saying picking or versus saying selecting. Um, check it, that, read a book. In this case, we, we just say read a book. There's no fancy way of saying to read a book. Well, let me read that. A potato. I laugh, hold on, a potato, it's right up here. A potato, wow, it's a big donation. Thank you, man, or girl, I'm not sure. Potato, <laughs> you, you self-identify as a potato. <laughs> I laughed at this and I want others to laugh too. 저한테 불만 있으세요? 아니요. No, just no, a potato, no. Like, do you have any sort of like complaint, like a problem, any problem with me? You got a problem? They say, 아니요, 물도 있어요. No, I have water too. Like, 불만, like only fire? He's like, no, I also have water. That's a bad joke. 
a potato. That's just bad. Why are you bringing those types of bad jokes into my chat? <laughs> no, sorry, that's bad. Oh, Mindstar says, I'm late. Can you sure? Oh yeah, I got to do a dab for potato first. <laughs> Thank you, a potato. Uh, someone just asked, I'm late. Can you do a short version of what we're talking about? Um, yeah, you just have to wait a few months. I'll make an abridged version of this eventually. Okay, in the case of Chegar Ikta and Toksor Hada, they both just mean read a book in English. But Toksa in Korean is actually the Chinese characters Tok, sorry, really like that. <laughs> Tok and Sa. Tok means to read. Sa means a book. So literally, Tokso Hada means read a book. To read a book. It's the exact same meaning as saying Chek Ikta, Chegar Ikta, to read a book literally to read a book or to do book reading you know it just sounds a little bit fancier a little bit more formal like a little bit more learned like you're a more educated man right but don't just go around saying hada using this because it'll sound a little bit awkward but if you see it that's just the only difference it's the exact same thing just sounds a little more fancier same sontek is actually a common word though tokso is less common you're not just going to say tokso uh, I want to read a book. You wouldn't say that. But if you were listing your hobbies in a uh, chat program and you have to list your hobbies, you might say like, Yonghua, 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 Kongbu. So English study, literally, and then Tokso. You don't need to necessarily say, Chek, Ikki, like reading books. Or chege ingningo, you don't have to say that, just tokso. Tokso means book reading by itself. So Chinese characters are sometimes, in this case, it would be fine. It wouldn't sound like you're trying to be really fancy in this case. So Chinese characters, sorry, Chinese words like these, the ones that are just using Chinese characters, um, sound a little bit fancier than their regular versions, but that's other than that, that's it. You can say koruda or sanpegar hada or other verbs for saying to choose, and you don't really have to worry too much about it. But yeah, it just sounds a little bit fancier. Let's see. Yes, okay, that is all for today. We actually finished, oh my goodness. When we started, I was so nervous because I was like right behind the clock. I'm like, oh no, I'm not gonna be able to talk about anything. Um, before that we finish, I'd like to take some of your questions for a few minutes because I know I went through this really fast and I wish I could have gone through it more slowly, but I didn't even get to do very many characters. I only did like 10 examples for the characters. Um, but yeah, feel free, ask some questions. Um, if someone asks a good question, if Ahibang or Rowan sees or um, uh, someone could p like, sorry, ping me, let me know so I can answer it if I'm missing something. <laughs> Dom, just joined, what did I miss? Rip, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, this would actually, if I were to do a proper lesson, like if I were to actually go into detail with more examples about each of the characters I taught you, this would have been like four hour lesson. I was really worried about that because it's really, it's a really big rabbit hole. Um, this, this goes really far and you can learn a lot about Hanta. And I've been going into, I've been learning about Hanta for longer than I've been learning about Korean. Actually, I started with, when I did Japanese, I immediately started going into Hanta because it's, ne it's necessary to know some the Chinese characters for reading and writing Japanese. So I got into it a little bit more than the basics and I started learning a lot of characters. I have a, a gigantic dictionary for Chinese characters in my room. Um, so I really like this, but I've been going at it for a long time. Uh, you could though still learn all the basic ones in just a year or so if you were to focus on it. Ah, Shane F asked, can we do the same with nay for next? Yeah, good question. Um, it's originally actually ne, but it's, it's only said as ne. So yeah, ne is a Chinese character that means next. Um, I can't remember how to write it next, write it right now, but I could read it. Anyway, ne, yun, next year, ne, ir, literally next day. Tomorrow, um, ne, ju, they don't use ne, ju, and they don't use ne, wo. They actually use taum for these cases. 
So it doesn't mean that they're going to use the next, it doesn't mean that they're going to use every single exam, every single possibility that everything can be combined. In this case, it's more common to say palm chu, palm tai for month. Palm is a pure Korean word, palm tai next month, and palm chu. But if you were to see neju written in Chinese characters, that's what it would mean. It would mean next week. You just, they wouldn't use that in Korean for speaking. Um, and there's another word that means also next. Um, we're not gonna be covering. Myung, myung is another word that means next. Let's see. I have a 3,000 character Chinese dictionary in the same of Japanese. Nice. There's a lot of family names. Any books that explain Hancha? Like I said, I don't know of any in English that I've read. I haven't read any in English, so I can't tell you. I, the one that I have and love is all in Korean. And I wouldn't change it though. I like that it's all in Korean. I think it's really easy to use that way. Does Korean have a form of cursive like we do in English? Yes, uh, Ocean Discovery, that would be the, just writing Korean really quickly, but that would be depending on the person. So like you might, like I would write Hanguk for Korea like this, but if someone's writing in Korean cursive, sorry, that was a bad example. They might something like, uh, that's, that's, I'm trying to see how they would do it. Like that, <laughs> you might do like really fast if you're trying to write the kuk really quickly. But if you were to ever see, like that, you know it says hanguk because you know that you can read, you can follow the stroke order that I made to be able to read that it still says hanguk. And I actually made a video about that, how um, writing, how to, what is it? It's why is stroke order important? It's a video that talks about is stroke order in hangul really important? And that's in my Korean FAQ series where I talk about that and I give some examples. But yes, there is uh, cursive in Korean. And yes, it's difficult to read if you don't know the stroke order. But as far as like really cursive, like something that journalists would use, I wouldn't know. That would be a good question. I'm not sure how Korea, people in Korea and journalists do shorthand. Like in, in, you know, in America, we have journalistic shorthand, which is really quick. Uh, I don't even know that in English. So that would be like a specialty, like a skill dependent thing that you would have to learn if you're getting into that field. But it's not something everyone would know. Handwriting is so annoying. More chicken scratch. <laughs> yeah. How fast can you write hancha? If I know the hancha, I can write it really fast. The problem is I can read a lot of hancha and I can't write a lot of it. I never really got good at writing even before I learned Korean. My hancha is mostly just like, I can read a lot of it and uh, I can tell you what it means and that's it. I'm not good at writing. And my writing's always been really messy, I think, especially for, for drawing hancha. But if, I'm, if I know the, how to draw the character already, so especially the simple, simpler ones, then I'm, I'm really fast, just like anyone else, but only for those characters. Wait, I just came here. Is hancha similar to hangul? No, hangul is the Korean alphabet. Hancha are Chinese characters from, that are used in Korea. Can you read Korean mixed script? Yes, but the thing with Korean mixed script is it's not that common. Um, the, the thing is, in Japanese, they use a mixed script. So you'll see the, their, their alphabet, which they have two, they have two syllabic alphabet, syllabic trees, whatever. The letters, each re the letters they use are just actually syllables in Japanese. And they have two of those, as well as they use kanji, hanja, pretty much. And uh, they mix them together. So you'll see both of them used and they use each one for different reasons, for different purposes. Uh, Korean though, they, for a short time, they had a mixed script. You'll see mixed script used sometimes, but it wasn't quite as, uh, it wasn't, it used to be a thing. It's not a thing anymore though, but it wasn't like it used to be written like that all the time. It was just in some cases they would mix the two together, but mostly it was just pick one or the other, not mixing them so much. Like newspapers might've mixed them. Um, it was more common in the past, but not anymore. Yeah. Hiragana, katakana, and kanji. My handwriting is like a computer. Yeah, I wish. I, I've never gotten better at writing, and my writing's only gotten worse 
as I've got older because I got faster and faster because I've been doing writing since I was, at least since I was five, I remember I was writing short stories and stuff. So, and I didn't have a computer, I would just write. Um, and yeah, my writing has always been really messy. I've always preferred speed over clarity. And sometimes I can't, it's not even clear. I can't, I can't even read it sometimes. Do wor similar words in Korean and Japanese come from the same hunter? Yeah, if you, you probably missed the beginning of the lesson where I talked about that. Is ha in the Korean name ha chiyu had a meaning? If the last name is ha, unless it's yu haji, but if the if the last name is ha, then no. Um, the last names don't have any meaning. I don't not familiar with the last name ha. I guess it's not, not that common. But yeah, every last name has a meaning, but the meaning of it is not important, is what I was saying. <laughs> I have an artist's hand. Which means when I was a kid, yeah, some of my friends had that too. I, I was jealous that some of my friends would just write so nice. So they write slowly, but it looks so nice. Like I did a video just, uh, I filmed a video just last week about how to organize a Korean study notebook. And for as part of the video, I made some pages, I made some example sentences and pages in a Korean notebook and then explain about how to organize it and stuff. And you can see like um, informal Korean, like my writing, my writing that I show you guys here is how I really write normally. So it's not that pretty. I, I always focus on speed. And that's how I write in the video too. And I was like, I'm filming it. I'm like, oh, it looks so bad. It's not as pretty as the other people's uh, notebook videos. But the information I think is pretty good. But yeah, it's, I just don't write very nicely. And that's my, all my notebooks are like terrible. It looks like, looks like someone threw up ink all over the page, especially my old vocabulary notebooks that I was, that I used to use when I was first studying uh, Korean as well as Japanese. Yeah, they're not pretty. Okay, so we are done for today. Uh, the conclusion is there's only, oh yeah, next week's class is the last class. Sunday, same time as today, because remember daylight savings time happened. So today's live stream was actually one hour uh, different than normal. Uh, next Sunday's will though be the same as this week. That's just due to daylight savings time changed. And uh, this will be the last stream, as in the very last stream for several months, because I'm going to be going to Korea uh, just in a few weeks. A few weeks from now, I'll be in Korea and I'll be there until the end of June. And then when I come back in June, the end of June, I'm not gonna start live streaming right away because I'm gonna have to first, well, unpack, edit some videos really quickly to upload. I'm gonna be really busy when I come back, you know, cleaning the house and everything like that. So this will be the last stream until I'd say at least July at the earliest. Um, and this next stream, we're going to be learning about, oh yeah, there's not gonna be a vote because we, we're already gonna be using all of the topics. So this next stream is go just going to be our last topic, which is finally, and a lot of you have asked for this, giving commands and suggestions, like telling someone do it or do something or please do something like that. Um, is, or you might also know them as imperative sentences. We'll talk about those. So this will be our last stream for a very long time. Um, in between the stream, I might do some like Q&A live streams but I'm not going to be able to do this type of live stream because I'm not gonna have this board with me in Korea or any markers. I'm not gonna have this web camera, my microphone, any of my computer, any of the setup in Korea. So I won't be able to do classroom live streams when I'm in Korea for several months. While that's happening, so while I'm gone, still every other week, I will upload a abridged version of the live streams. And while I'm gone also, Think about what you guys want to learn for the next season. So this will be season three, which will start July at the earliest or August at the latest, sometime around then. What would you want to learn for season three? What would you like to see different? Would you like different things to happen? Uh, do you want more, do you want like double dabs for every donation or do you want something different? Do you want me to sing for donations? Do you want um, different types of topics? Do you have suggestions for those topics? Do you have different lengths of lessons you want to do? I can make changes to make it better. So give me your suggestions in the Discord. So everyone join the Discord for updates. There's a link in the description. There's also a link in the uh, 
well, a link in the chat as well. Uh, join the Discord for any updates and make any suggestions there. I am listening to them. I do hang out in the Discord a lot where I take your feedback. So yes, t today, sorry, next Sunday will be the last live stream. Um, it's going to be really sad because I really enjoy doing these live streams. But uh, I'll try to do some other live stream in Korea. It just won't be weekly in Korea and it won't be a class. It might just be like live. If I go somewhere, maybe I can live stream it or something. Um, so yes, uh, thank you though again to uh, Grandpa Mikey, CM Leidi, Ehiman. Happy birthday to Yungi again. Chris O, our new member, as well as thank you to A Potato <laughs> for your donations. And I, I really enjoy doing these live streams. So I guess I'm, I'm kind of like... Um, what do you call it? I'll give you, I'll give you guys a word, how I, how I feel. Shiwon <laughs> sapsapada is a combination of two words in Korean. Uh, it means kind of like melancholy, what would be, what would be a good word? Melancholy, like sad, but happy at the same time. Like you're kind of happy something's happening, but you're also kind of sad, like, you know, it's bittersweet. That's the word I was trying, I couldn't think of it. Kind of like that feeling you get. Like, you know, you say good, you, your friend comes and hangs out with you for a week at your house and then your friend finally leaves. You're like, yeah, he's gone. Finally, you know, I can do whatever I want, but he's gone. It was fun. You know, we had a fun time. Kind of like that. So yeah, she won sap uh, would be the, a good emotion. So like, you know, it's a lot of work for me to do these live streams. You know, I spend typically about four hours doing research for writing each episode, as well as a couple hours for setting up this room each time, you know, I mean, going, coming to the library, uh, getting the whiteboard set up, um, planning for it, as well as then the two hours doing the stream. So it's a lot of work. So it'd be nice to not have to worry about that while I'm in Korea. But at the same time, I really like doing these too. So I think I will miss it as well. And I'm, I've gotten so used to it now. I've been doing it every single week with exception of one week. Uh, between seasons uh, every single week since last year like what was that august i think august september i started so yeah it'll be weird not doing it again during the summer but hopefully when i come back again we'll have well i'll still get to see you guys so thank you for coming and again all of these outlines are posted on the patreon page so that's for every patreon even the one dollar patrons i love all you guys thank you for your support so you can check out these outlines and uh, I'll see you guys again next week. Krom Taume Toba. Now I gotta get out of this library. I think they're gonna close in here.